Welcome back to the Agora Cafe for more coffee. Not my Agora Cafe mug today, my Aristotle mug. More coffee and philosophy. Um, so I gather there's some kind of election going on and uh, or coming up. And so I want to say a little bit about how and more importantly, why I plan to vote or not. Uh, vote. Um, I'll get to the spoiler right away. I'm not going to vote uh, in the coming election. Um, I want to say a little bit about why. Uh, and uh, because there are some standard libertarian arguments for not voting that I don't think are that good. And those are not my reasons. Um, as I'm not against voting in principle. Uh, I I could, in principle, be lured back into voting um, by a sufficiently good candidate. Um, but uh, so first of all, there's uh, there's one argument against voting that says that by voting you are, and this is an argument that's sort of common with um, uh, with uh, people in the so-called voluntarist movement, people like. Um, George H. Smith and Carl Walkner and Wendy McElroy uh, have uh, given the, I believe that they're all on the same page with this argument, uh, that um, by voting you are thereby endorsing what the winner does. Uh, and therefore uh, voting is, uh, is immoral. Uh, I don't think that's right. If, uh, you know, if you're, uh, uh, you know, if you're uh, a prisoner in a prison, but for some reason they let you vote between as to which guards you're going to get, and there's one guard who uh, uh, promises, and you have some reason to believe that these promises are roughly probable to be fulfilled. Um, one pro guard promises to beat you 50 times a day, and the other one promises to beat you 30 times a day. I think it's perfectly reasonable to vote for the one who promises to beat you 30 times a day. Um, it doesn't mean you are authorizing the beatings. Um, uh, it just means it's just a form of self-defense. As, as Lysander Spooner said back in uh, his work, the, the Constitution of No Authority, which voluntarists are a big fan of, but it seems to me they're missing an important part of it, which is voting as a form of self-defense. It's not, um, uh, it's uh, not, um, uh, endorsement. Now, of course, it's true that given the complications of politics, it's likely that anyone you vote for uh, will engage in some rights violations that the other candidate wouldn't have. Uh, it's not as though, you know, um, it's not as though it's just a choice between larger and smaller amounts of, of rights violations. There's a different distribution. Um, but still, I think it makes sense to uh, you know, if there are um, uh, if there are two freight trains headed toward you, toward your community, of you know, it makes sense to try and block the one that would do more damage. Doesn't mean you're you know that you're responsible for the damage the other one would do. Um, uh, another argument that's often given is that uh, voting is. Uh, pragmatically pointless because your vote doesn't make a difference. And so the argument is that if you, um, that since the likelihood that an election will be decided by a single vote is vanishingly small, you can infer that the way things will turn out will be the same uh, whether you vote or not. And it's pointless to do something where the outcome will be the same whether you do it or not, you know, unless it's in intrinsically fun to do it. but. You know, is it intrinsically fun to vote to go and stand in line and then you know, I mean, that's your idea of entertainment uh, if you do it, but otherwise not. Uh, I don't think that argument works. Um, and one reason I don't think it works is, you know, the people who make this argument are also uh, doing the very thing they criticize by, you know, every time someone who accepts that argument gets voting, every time one of them writes, you know, some kind of blog post promoting libertarianism or promoting non-voting, perhaps. Um, 
they're doing something where the their individual blog post is unlikely to make a crucial difference between society going libertarian or not. Um, and yet they don't seem to think that that's irrational. So I, I think it's rational to make uh, contributions to public goods. So I think the triumph of libertarianism, properly understood, the right kind of libertarianism, that is the left kind, um, uh, I think the triumph of libertarianism is a public good. It's something that everyone benefits from. Um, and that people who, who uh, people will benefit from it, whether they contribute to it or not. Um, and I think it's rational to contribute to public goods. I don't think we have a duty to contribute to every public good because you couldn't. Uh, you, it's, a, in, it's what Kant calls an imperfect duty. Uh, you get to pick and choose which ones you, you want to uh, contribute to. You pick and choose which ones and when and how much. Um, but I think that's a, you know, uh, contributing to the, um, uh, you know, to the rise of a, of a freer society is uh, good worth contributing to. Um, and, um, and also I think that uh, you know, there isn't just a value in the result, but also a value in thinking that you were part of, of, uh, of what helped bring about the result. And, um, or that you might be part of what will help bring about the result. And being part of what will help bring about the result doesn't mean that your, your contribution would make the crucial difference. Maybe the result will be the same whether, whether you contribute or not, but that might be true of like you know, most of the other people who are contributing too, but nevertheless, all of them together um, are needed. Um, now, Nevertheless, of course, it's true that you know, even if lo this logic applies as much to writing a blog post in favor of libertarianism as it does to voting for some supposedly libertarian outcome, um, it doesn't mean I think that those are equally um, strong contributions. I think that you probably do more for a political cause by writing one blog post in favor of it than by casting one vote for it. Um, because one blog post might be read by more than one person uh, and several people's minds might be uh, slightly influenced by it and they could go and influence other people. So you're probably gonna have more impact writing just one blog post than by casting a single vote. Um, which is why I think it's so offensive when you see these ads as I'm constantly being inundated with these ads that say voting is the most important thing you can do. Good God, no, it's not. Um, uh, however, even though uh, you know, writing one blog post has more of an impact than casting one vote. Nevertheless, the logic by libertarians who say that casting of one vote is pointless, it would also apply to uh, writing one blog post because, uh, you know, unless they have a very inflated sense of of their uh, of their own blog post, let's put it that way. Um, the odds that that blog post will make the crucial difference between the libertarian society being achieved at some point not is very low. Uh, and yet they find you know, it, it's worth making that contribution. So if they don't accept the logic as a reason not to, uh, you know, not to make the blog post, that's not a reason not to vote. Uh, you know, however, you know, the point I just made that you actually are likely to have more impact with the blog post than the vote is a reason to think if you have to choose between doing the blog post and doing the vote, why not choose the blog post? Because you might think, well, of course, you don't have to choose, you could do both. So why not vote? Um, uh, you know, especially if you think, you know, now, of course, another reason you might not want to vote is you might think, leaving aside third parties for the moment, and I'll, I'll get to them. Um, but if you're just talking about like the, the two major monstrosities. Uh, you might not want to vote because you might think that they are equally bad or close enough to being equally bad. It's not worth your time uh, to vote for them. That's sometimes true. In this election, I actually don't think it's true. I think that Trump is seriously worse uh, than Biden, although Biden is pretty bad. Um, bad in many of the same ways that Trump is actually. But uh, Trump has uh, 
you know, has empowered and given legitimacy to basically fascism, a, a fascist, um, uh, you know, a fascist, uh, uh, racist movement in the U.S. and also an overreaching of uh, of power even beyond what is uh, the norm uh, in politics. Uh, but since I'm just so sick of seeing his face and that is i think a perfectly legitimate reason to vote against somebody um so if i were going to vote for one of the two monstrosities i would vote for biden uh against trump though with no great enthusiasm um in fact if there were a if there were a button by pushing the button i would cause trump i would cause biden to be elected and by not pushing the button, I would guarantee that Trump would be elected. Uh, I think I probably would push the button to get Biden elected, um, though very unhappily. Um, but I, uh, you know, I think I would because I think that uh, Trump is more dangerous to, you know, not to, to the national culture uh, than Biden is. But. Uh, but in fact, there is no such button. Uh, you know, you know, if uh, you know, if uh, Trump wins by a single Alabama vote, then you can blame me uh, for not um, for not voting. But I think I do not think that that he will. If Trump loses, it will not be by one vote. And if it is by one vote, it won't be by an Alabama vote. So. Um, I think that uh, I'm safe on that score. Uh, you know, what about voting third party? Uh, you know, what's wrong with, for example, the Libertarian Party candidate? Well, you know, I have mixed views about Joe Jorgensen. I think she's got some merits and some demerits. Um, uh, she's. Uh, you know, uh, I like the fact that she's actually. Uh, who tried to drag the right libertarians kicking and screaming toward the idea that you know maybe Black Lives Matter and that kind of radical view. Um, uh, um, I think that her uh, uh, you know, her position on um, uh, on pandemic stuff is uh, insufficiently nuanced. I think that. Those who those who see the um, you know, restrictions on the pandemic as completely and purely uh, uh, justified, and those who see them as completely and purely unjustified, are missing the complicated, you know, right situation involved. Uh, but I'm, uh, I think it's a much more complicated mix, which I'm not going to get into. But anyway, so I, I don't think her rhetoric on that is completely helpful. She's much more of a capitalist libertarian than I am. Also, she's against abortion, although she said that she would support the platform. Even though she's against abortion, she would support the platform being, uh, being in favor of the right to abortion. Um, which again is odd. If I were a candidate, if I were against abortion, I would not support the platform in favor of it. I would say, look, if you're going to nominate me, you have to reach the fact that I'm not going to support everything on the platform. Um, you know, I, would, I, wouldn't, uh, I would be arguing against uh, I would be arguing against abortion if I was a libertarian candidate and I were, uh, and I were anti-abortion. Um, neither of which two things is likely to happen. Um, or likewise, if the libertarian party got taken over by, uh, by conservatives and anti-abortion became the libertarian party platform and I were running with my actual views, I, you know, I would not support the platform. Um, Human rights are more important than party platforms. Come on, um, uh, you know I prefer, uh, you know I prefer the um, you know, obviously I prefer Jorgensen to either Trump or Biden. And if there again, if there are buttons, um, and you know pushing button A would get me Jorgensen, pushing button B would get me Biden. Not pushing any button would get me Trump. Of course, I'd push Jorgensen. Um, Heck, uh, you know, I would, you know, just you know, <laughs> the number of people I would pick over 
either Biden or Trump is enormous. But I used to, you know, for a long time, I used to vote for um, uh, for the Libertarian candidate. Uh, now, my first presidential vote ever cast was in 1984 for Ronald Reagan. That's my my great shame. Um, I was a Reaganite back then. I was never a pure Reaganite. I'm happy to say. Uh, I never went in for the, um, you know, the uh, moral majority stuff, but I was, you know, I was more of a, of a, you know, right-wing capitalist, and also I was very hawkish in foreign policy. Um, I got better, uh, as uh, the guy says in uh, the Holy Grail. Uh, well, I actually learned something about history and foreign policy, for one thing. Um, uh, but you know, after that, for a long time, I always voted for the Libertarian Party candidate. I, I became a, a Libertarian Party member in 1987 after watching the Republican Party debates, where it was, uh, it was, um, I think it was like George Bush, uh, Jack Kemp, uh, Alexander Haig, maybe, uh, Pete Dupont. Pat Robertson, um, I forget who else. There's someone else of more, more name recognition than some of those. But anyway, um, uh, you know, so you know, since I was a Republican, I was watching this debate to see which one, uh, which one I was going to support, and the, and of course they were all terrible. Uh, and I had heard, uh, uh, you, know, you know, among sort of Republican supporting libertarians, I had heard that the the two candidates with the most uh, libertarian sounding, um, uh, or the most libertarian potential, were Camp and Dupont. Uh, and so Dupont just went on this rant about all this stuff he wanted to do in the drug war and. Uh, and you know, just strip, strip search everyone in high schools and stuff. Uh, and then when, when DuPont made some mild libertarian suggestion in economics, I think it was, was it Kemp who said, oh, hey, Pete, we never know what crazy libertarian idea you're going to come up with next. So I didn't really see any libertarianism from the two libertarian candidates, um, uh, supposedly, supposedly so, so, so described. Uh, and then one of them said, well, I think we could all agree that any of us here would be better than the Democrats. And there's Pat Robertson saying there. You really, think that Pat Robertson would be better than any of the Democrats? Jesus Christ, no. Um, so anyway, that was when I lost my interest in the Republicans. Um, and so I joined the Libertarian Party. I was very excited to join the Libertarian Party. It's a radical break with, uh, with my past. And uh, I, uh, you know, voted until... Until I think it was was it two thousand eight I think it was when Bob Barr became the um, the nominee for the LP, and I could not support Bob Barr, and so I I think I didn't vote then. And then since then they've had people who were better than Bob Barr, but never enough to lure me back. Now if someone were like if there was some really consistent, uh, articulate left libertarian, I would vote. For, I would come back and vote for them. Um, uh, because I think you know, you know, there is value in contributing, not just because you know, you're not just you're, the goal would not be just be to contribute to get them elected, because that's very unlikely, but contributing to get you know, getting a bigger uh, you know a bigger share of the um, of the vote gets them various kinds of benefits. Um, uh, it gets them more exposure. It makes ballot access easier next time. In fact, that's one of the best reasons to vote third party is just to get them, make it easier to get for them to get ballot access because the uh, uh, the laws, uh, the laws making it harder for third parties to get on the ballot than than for major parties to get on are, are really outrageous and, and should be struck down by the um, uh, Supreme Court if you're really paying attention to the 14th Amendment and equal protection of the laws. Uh, Equal protection of the laws should mean that you shouldn't have burdens placed on third parties that you don't place on the ruling parties. That's just straightforward application of the 14th Amendment. Come on, guys. Um, 
but uh, so for some reason, the Supreme Court doesn't always do what I want. I've noticed this is a kind of pattern. Um, I'll have to talk to them about that. So, uh, uh, you know, I could be lured back to the Libertarian Party, uh, although, you know, you know, given that I've gotten more lefty over the years and they haven't really, uh, you know, I don't feel as, as much sympathy. I, I may still be a member. I can't remember if it, my membership has probably lapsed, but um, uh, I may still be a member. I don't know. Um, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not as important to me as it used to be. Because one thing is that I think that there are other forms of activism that are more important. And that um, although there are certain benefits for voting for a third party, um, and not necessarily a um, doesn't have to be a libertarian candidate. I mean, my ideal candidate would be kind of would be kind of a libertarian green fusion. Um, so I could certainly be open to voting for a green candidate, although I never have, and doesn't seem terribly likely that I ever will. But I'd be open to it if the if the green candidate had like a better candidate than usual, and the LP had a worse candidate than usual. Um, but uh, the you know. The benefit of voting for a third party as a kind of protest against the establishment, I think, uh, has its value, but it, um, but it also sort of the, the disvalue of it is it contributes to this idea of uh, the um, of uh, electoral politics being the main venue for social change, and I don't think it is uh, or political change, um, uh, and I think that. Uh, the traditional uh, anarchist and agorist view that uh, you change society by building alternative institutions and by winning people's affiliation away from the state toward these alternative institutions is a more effective form of social change. Uh, for one thing, as Charles Johnson has, has pointed out, uh, you know, the problem with uh, with the voting is that you have to win, you know, fifty percent plus one of the vote to have an effect. Now, actually, strictly speaking, you know, you get some effect just by getting a a substantial percentage, even if you don't win, because you have there's some kind of uh, of you know, promotional value to that. But still, you know, mainly it's a you know it's a absolute win or lose thing. Whereas. Uh, other forms of, uh, of activism, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, the kind of uh, grassroots organizing that um, uh, uh, that uh, sort of left-wing anarchists have traditionally favored, or whether it's sort of the black market activity that uh, you know, Sam Conkin favored, or even if it's just publishing books and blog posts and videos, uh, educational stuff. Um, I think all of that is is more effective than voting because it has impact at the margin. Uh, you uh, you can uh, you can actually have a uh, you know, a, a local effect of influencing. You know, you can free up some areas. Um, you can uh, if you're doing things like um, you know the the example that uh, Charles gives is. If you're actually helping uh, immigrants avoid uh, the immigration authorities, uh, that's actually more effective than voting for freer immigration laws. Because you vote for free immigra freer immigration laws and you get 49% of the vote, you get nothing. Whereas if you are uh, helping people um, uh, uh, avoid uh, immigration laws. You've, you've actually helped some specific number of people. You haven't helped everyone, but there are specific people you've helped who would not have been helped um, uh, if you hadn't done it. Uh, so you actually have a you really get more bang for your buck by uh, by uh, you know, sort of direct forms of activism as opposed to voting, and even through education, you uh, you have more influence. Uh, whether you're you know, whether you're Ayn Rand or Noam Chomsky, you know, the main influence that Ayn Rand and Noam Chomsky have had is not the, you know, whatever they did when they went into a voting booth and, you know, and, uh, 
you know, pulled a lever or filled in a box for whoever they were voting for. Um, you know, that's not, and you know, although not all of us can be as influential as as Ayn Rand or Noam Chomsky. Um, uh, if there were a fusion of Ayn Rand and Noam Chomsky, would I vote for them? No, they'd be, they'd be too statist. A fusion of Ayn Rand and Noam Chomsky would be too statist for me. Um, but still, they'd be you know they'd be better than um, they'd be better than anyone else on the ballot. Um, uh, but uh, uh, maybe a fusion of. Murray Rothbard and David Graeber might be, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, uh, even you know minor efforts of uh, of education or direct action or uh, um, you know a lot of people you know, get interested in, in left wing anarchism through participating in something like food in food not bombs, which is a a service that that provides free food to people, uh, the people who get involved in it. Uh, it's a heavily anarchist oriented organization. People involved in it often sort of get their consciousness raised uh, and start learning stuff and reading stuff and so forth. I think that you know, that Food Not Bombs has done more to build uh, you know, the anarchist movement than voting for an anarchist I would be likely to do. So um, I think that the process of building alternative institutions because remember anarchism is the the only political system that doesn't require taking over the government in order to get what it wants most political systems they have to take over the government whether they do it through you know parliamentary so-called means that is by voting or whether they do it through extra parliamentary means like seizing power in the revolution uh in both cases they have to get control of the power structure uh, to vote, you know, to, to have make it you know, their impact. But anarchism, you know, the whole point is to make the power structure go away. And the power structure, its existence depends on the acquiescence and support of the people. So if you can get people to transfer their affiliation from the, uh, you know, as Gustav Landauer says, the state is a, you know, is a form of interaction among people. If you get them to interact differently, the state goes away. You know, that doesn't mean that there might not be any violent conflict in the process. Uh, but um, uh, because the state probably doesn't want to go away, uh, but um, it does mean that uh, you know you're not fighting a thing like the Death Star that you want to blow up some particular point on it and the whole thing blows up. It's not a thing. This the you know, the state uh, or more broadly you know oppression of, of any kind uh, in society. Is not a thing. It's a pattern of interaction, and the way you, uh, you know, you can't abolish a pattern of interaction by decreeing something. Um, well, you can, but it, you know, it's not going to be productive for anarchists. You abolish a pattern of interaction by luring people into, you know, everyone's, you know, got everyone's doing the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the hokey pokey, and you want them to do. Uh, uh, you know, some other kind of dance, you know, you start doing your other kind of dance over here and you gradually lure people uh, over. Um, and it's a piece where the, you know, the anarchist means fit the anarchist end um, in a way. Now, of course, there's one kind of voting I haven't mentioned, which is not voting for people, but um, uh, voting on referenda. I think voting for on referenda often makes more sense, although I don't generally do it. Um, but I, you know, I might if the referendum were important enough. Um, most of the referenda issues that, uh, you know, that come up in local elections here are things like, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, law you know, three six seven nine e five is hereby amended from bridges and roads to bridges or roads, that kind of thing. Um, but even if you figure out what it's about, it's not worth your time to cross the street to, to do anything with it. With it. Uh, but sometimes referenda are more serious. Uh, if there are a referendum about whether to turn Auburn into a sanctuary city for immigrants, I, I would probably go vote for that. Um, 
uh, you know, it's, you know, referendum is actually safer than voting for a person because voting for a person, you're just getting their, you know, their promises, which they're not necessarily going to do. Whereas uh, you know, voting for referendums, you know, it's not that, they're, that the government's necessarily going to apply the laws, it's, as it said, but it, you know, it's, it's a little bit safer. Another point, uh, I mentioned that I think we have a, an imperfect duty uh, to contribute to public goods and that that can be a reason for voting. But that can also be a reason not for voting because uh, redirecting people's attention away from electoral politics as the venue for social change is a public good. Uh, and so, you know, if um, you, know, you could say, well, you should, you know, we should vote for candidate X because if everyone voted for candidate X, uh, there would be a good result. And so we could contribute to that. Um, but it's also true that if everyone withdrew from electoral politics and boycotted the whole thing, there'd be a good result uh, and result much closer to what we want. Uh, so uh, given that I think that uh, abolishing uh, the the whole political governmental way of doing things and abolishing the legitimacy of that and and abolishing the idea that that is the most important the central way that you make a difference in society like as i mentioned that god awful ad this is voting is the most important thing you do or most important thing you can do which is just incredibly uh, offensive obnoxious terrifying claim um you know, all the ways in which we you know, we contribute uh, to social goods uh, in other ways. And this idea that by you know, walking into a booth and you know, pulling a lever for doofus A over doofus B, that's the most important thing you can do. That's a sh shameful thought. No one should, should take that seriously. And so I think that, that helping to undermine that is a public good. And so there is a an imperfect duty that one way of satisfying our imperfect duty uh, is to refrain from voting. Now, since it's imperfect, you don't have to refrain from voting. You know, you, you know this is a case where different imperfect duties are, are competing. Uh, I can understand uh, people who think, you know, if, if someone is, if one candidate is, is seriously worse than another one, I can understand they might think it's reasonable for them uh, to decide to take their, their public duty ticket and apply it to that um, because getting the worst candidate defeated is also a public good. Um, but uh, you know, I do think that there is an opportunity to, to see uh, electoral, uh, to see uh, the boycotting of electoral politics, the avoidance of it, the opposition to it you know, as a public good, as a, you know, come out from the unclean thing. Um, that that is a uh, a more powerful message in the long run than oh let's get our uh, our person elected. It shows more radically uh, the you know, the possibility of alternative vision. Uh, now, of course, you have to conjoin that with an alternative vision. Uh, if you just say well, I don't vote, that's it. Uh, then it seems like you're you know, you're apathetic or lazy or uh, selfish or something like that, uh, you know. So you have to, you have to conjoin that with the explanation that you are offering or working toward a different kind of uh, a form of, of social and political interaction. Um, you know, you're not, uh, you know, you're not, uh, you know, just as um, uh, you know people who boycott something are not against you know people who boycott factory farming are not against food um uh, and people who uh who uh who uh you know, who, uh, you know to boycott something doesn't mean you don't you don't want to replace that with something else uh, uh that is better uh but anyway so yeah i think that there is uh is the way i see it uh you know boycotting uh, the election is a contribution to public good. Now, participating in one can also be a contribution to public good because life is complicated and these are both, and they're both imperfect duties, so they don't clash. Um, you know, I mean, doing them both clashes, but as duties, they don't clash because 
they're both optional. Um, but you know, giving your spare money to charity A and charity and giving it to charity B clash as actions if you can't afford to do both, but they don't clash as duties because they're both imperfect duties. Um, uh, but I, uh, you know, I do see, um, uh, I do see boycotting elections as a way of uh, uh, of satisfying uh, the imperfect duty uh, to contribute to public goods. And I do think that we have an imperfect duty to public goods, meaning it's, I don't think it, it's, it's not an optional. I think we have, it's a duty we have to contribute to public goods. So what makes it imperfect is that we get to pick which ones where, um, but we, we do as part of our you know, part of our duty as social cooperative beings is uh, that we you know, that we can that we make these kinds of contributions. And to those who think it's irrational to make a contribution that isn't going to make a difference, well, you couldn't walk across the room without making a contribution to your own actions that isn't going to make a difference. Because if you didn't take that step right now, you could take it you know, a second from now. Um, uh, so all uh, all action. Uh, presupposes that it's worthwhile doing, you know, particular things that aren't going to make sense unless they're conjoined with broader cooperation. Uh, so uh, that's what I have to say about that. Um, uh, anyway, so those are some of the reasons that I am uh, not voting, and some of, and some of the reasons that are not the reasons uh, I'm not voting. Um, in this election, I am, you know, in a sense, tepidly rooting for Biden in the sense I hope Biden wins over Trump, um, but not enough that, you know, I want to, you know, dip my hands into the muck by voting for him. Uh, I'm, although I don't think that the voting is immoral, I've gotten so there's, you know, it's like, you know, I see the election booth and I feel like, oh, come out, come out from the unclean thing, uh, which used not to be my view, but uh, I've gotten sort of radicalized. Um, I'll also be sort of tepidly rooting for Jorgensen. She's not my ideal candidate, but but uh, I would prefer, you know, I'd be pleased to see her get higher vote totals rather than lower. Um, and apparently, um, at least so I hear after the uh, uh, the idiotic debate between uh, Trump and Biden. Apparently, uh, a lot of interest in the Libertarian Party uh, website went up. Although I really wish that there were a, you know, a Libertarian standard bearer that represented you know, my flavor of Libertarian. Of course, my flavor of Libertarian wouldn't probably wouldn't be running anyway. But if they were running, they wouldn't get the nomination. Um, uh, uh, you know, so I mean, I'm almost worried about a, uh, you know, when an imperfect libertarian candidate runs, even if they're not as radically imperfect as Barr was, uh, because they become a kind of spokesperson for libertarianism and they sort of shape the image of libertarianism in people's minds. Um, you know, so Ron Paul, for example, there's, there's one, I'll give Ron Paul credit for one thing. I know that before Ron Paul's, um, I'll give Ron Paul credit for more than one thing, but you know, one thing in particular I have in mind is that before Ron Paul's campaign, a lot of people I knew were under the impression that libertarians generally were hawkish in foreign policy, that they were sort of, you know, they were just sort of Reaganites who wanted to smoke weed. And the, um, uh, and Ron Paul's campaign uh, changed the public perception of libertarianism in that respect, that people recognized that the the standard default, normal, uh, not the universal, but normal position among self-described libertarians is to be anti-interventionist. And so that's a good thing that, that Ron Paul did. But I think that Ron Paul's uh, campaign, both his, both his libertarian campaign and, and more recently his much splashier uh, Republican campaign, um, you know, contributed to a view of uh, of libertarianism is associated with the cultural right. Um, and in fact, uh, not only contributed to it, but, you know, helped make it so, um, you know, sort of empowered the, uh, you know, the cultural right side of the libertarian movement. Um, 
in a way that I think is is very damaging to libertarianism. So I think that uh, you know it's hard to say whether Ron Paul did more good or more harm. Certainly, Ron Paul brought lots of people into the movement who then went on to become either much creepier right wingers or much you know people who are much more libertarian than he was. Uh, brought in both kinds of people. Um, you know, so I think was it some famous historian? I forget. Was it maybe Arnold Toynbee or someone who said, "See, there's asked, you know, do you think the impact of Christianity in history has been primarily positive or negative?" And he answered, "It's too soon to say." Which I always thought was a charming response. So I think it may be too soon to say whether Ron Paul's overall impact uh, is positive or negative, but still, it's negative enough that you know. I, uh, you know, even though I say that I want um, that I like seeing libertarian candidates get larger share of the the vote, even if they're not going to win, part of me sort of cringes when they do because I don't want I don't want a uh, you know, a bad version of libertarianism to be the one that gets public uh, attention. Um, although I uh, I fear Jorgensen's probably not going to get that much attention, even though a lot of people are sort of turned off by both Biden or Trump, a lot of people feel strongly enough that one of them or the other of them is seriously the, the greater evil. That uh, I think a lot of people are gonna vote for Trump who can't stand him just because they think Biden's much worse. worse. A lot of people are gonna vote for Biden who can't stand him because they think Trump is much worse. Um, you know, so uh, I don't think that, um, I don't think a third party candidate's gonna have that much uh, uh, impact in this uh, election. Um, but anyway, you know, I'm always happy to see any any third party doing well just because uh, uh, you know, I like anything that moves us in the direction of a less uh, monopolistic system. In fact, if there were something like instant runoff voting or something like that, which would get rid of this throw away your vote argument, which is a bad argument anyway, but anyway, people would be less tempted by it if people could rank order their choices and so if your first choice doesn't win then your vote goes to the second choice and so forth they're different they're different systems of voting but they're not all you know this sort of first past the post uh kind of uh but i think that would be an improvement uh uh if i were the dictator i would impose that although any timeline in which i was the dictator would probably be a timeline in which i i would be very different from myself and so I don't know what I would be and the world would be very different from itself and so I don't know. You know I can't really say with confidence what would happen in that case. Anyway, so uh, uh, you know, I'm not voting. My, my choice uh, for vote is none of the above. I wish none of the above well. None of the above is my favorite candidate. There are other candidates that uh, you know, who I prefer some to others. Uh, you know, I prefer Biden to Trump. I prefer Jorgensen to Biden. Um, I prefer, you know, pretty much any of the the major third party candidates to Biden. No, not I don't know, I don't know all the third party candidates. I'm sure there's some like creepy Nazi ones I would not prefer. But um, uh, but you know my you know, my allegiance is you know, is first and foremost to none of the above. Uh, you know, why not why not support the one you like most and that's the one i like most um anyway so that's the i'm gonna say the short but it's ended up not being quite as short as i intended um short answer is to uh, uh who i'm voting for and or not and why uh so see you on the other side of this election <laughs>